We're still in chapter one of the textbook uh, computer organization, hardware and software interface. So after that, we're, we're going to skip some chapters and move on to other chapters because uh, some of those topics have been discussed in 131 but in a different instruction set architecture. So in the, in, in the textbook in, in the textbook that we're using we're, use, we're using the ARM architecture, but in 131 we use the uh, x86 architecture. Okay? So <coughs> we were talking about performance. So as a computer user or a computer designer, we are in, we, we are interested in improving the performance, and we have several uh, measures to do that. And one is uh, in the quiz you have the relative performance. So basically the same example here. So uh, uh, the quiz, the problem of the quiz is the same, I just change the values. So the formula will just be the same and you get the, you get the final value. So in a way, this is how you compare the performance of uh, uh, two, two machines right? or two programs relative to each other. So uh, the key the key variable here, the key metric here is execute execution time. How long uh, the time uh, did uh, how long did it take for the program to finish execution? Right. So uh, now how do we uh, as a review how do we measure the execution time? Because these are the parameters here execution time. So there are two types of times. You have the elapsed time. And I said last time, elapsed time is the totality. So whenever you, uh, at the command prompt, that slash hello, right? And then it ran and then it completed. It's one clock time, basically, that's the elapsed time. It involves everything. And uh, the other one is CPU time, which is more specific to the program. Somehow, you, I, I, will, I will show an example later how this is measured. So CPU time is the spent time spent processing a given job. and. Uh, comprises user CPU time and system CPU time. Now, CPU time is divided into two because you have the CPU time, the user CPU time, because this is the actual CPU time used by the program itself. And then the system CPU time is the time that was used uh, that is not specific to the program. Let's say system calls, IO operations, so that's part of the system. C uh, actually, I/O operation is not part of the CPU. But uh, whenever the the operating system context switches or runs in kernel mode, we can say that uh, that is the system CPU time. And different programs are affected differently by CPU and system performance. And then uh, at the lowest, at the lowest, at the lowest level, at the, lo at the lower level, okay, usually the the operation of the hardware is driven by a clock tick. So whenever we, uh, by, uh, by clock cycles, right? So basically when you purchase computers, the higher the clock rate, right, the better because you it allows the generation of this uh, uh, clock to be faster. So in a way, the computation will be faster because for example, uh, if you can shorten this time here, then it can perform the data transfer in comp in computation in a fast manner. And after the computation, you update the state. Let's say update the register, update the memory. So uh, there's a relationship between the clock period. So this is the clock period and uh, the number of changes per, per unit time that is the uh, clock frequency or the clock rate. So usually uh, for gigahertz, etc. I'm showing an example of this last time. So now let's consider C uh, the relationship between, so we're talking about CPU time here. We said that CPU time, uh, you, have, you have user CPU time and system CPU time. And then you have CPU clocking, which drives the execution of the, pro of the instructions. Now, how do we relate these uh, uh, two variables? <coughs> so the CPU time is actually equal to the CPU uh, clock cycles multiplied by the uh, clock cycle time. Right? So uh, you have the clock cycle and you have the clock cycle time. So if you combine this formula, right, you get this uh, nice uh, equation here. So CPU time is equal to the CPU clock cycles right, used by this particular say, user CPU time, the user program, divided by the clock rate. Right? 
So using this uh, relationship, this formula, the performance can be improved by the following. Okay? The first one is reducing the number of clock cycles. That means if you have a program and if you want to increase the uh, uh, CPU time or lessen the CPU time, okay? so you can uh, reduce the number of uh, clock cycles. Okay? So with uh, clock cycles, clock cycles here. So, you reduce the number of clock cycles this is for a given operation. So ito, isa, isa, isang program to halimbawa. Tapos, ito yung clock cycle na ginamit para sa program na to. What we mean by reducing the clock cycle is, for this operation to happen, pwede instead of using three clock cycles, we can just use two clock cycles. So, in that way, we lessen the CPU time. Okay? Another one is increasing the clock rate. So, this is the denominator. So, if you increase the clock rate, then the CPU time will basic, basically be lessened. So, uh, if you increase the clock rate here, okay, so the computation will be faster because in a constrained time, okay, the, the, the completion of the computation in the data transfer will be faster. Okay? So, this, uh, using this equation, it is uh, very easy to adjust the parameters based on the CPU clock cycle and the clock rate. Okay? So the hardware designer must often uh, make a trade-off between the clock rates uh, against cycle count. Okay? So we illustrated this last time. So we have two computers, a two gigahertz and uh, uh, another computer. A, two, uh, a computer A with two gigahertz clock and 10 seconds CPU time. And you are asked to design computer B with uh, six seconds CPU time. Okay? And uh, you want to determine the clock rate. So using the equation, okay, uh, we arrive at 4 gigahertz as the final value for the clock rate for computer B in order to achieve this six seconds CPU time just by manipulating the equations, okay? So, uh, so another, uh, so these parameters here does not actually involve uh, this equation, does not include the instruction count, the number of instructions generated. Because eventually, if you have a program, uh, that program will be converted into uh, instructions like move, add, JMP, CMP, JE, by those instructions. Right? And this equation does not uh, include the count of instructions, right? Because you only have CPU clock cycles. How do you measure that? Clock rate is all already published when you purchase the computer. Okay? So it's the instruction count and the CPI that is uh, the relationship between these two that allows you to include the count or the number of instructions to be included in the computation of the CPU time. Okay? So the clock cycles basically is equal to the instruction count and the cycles per instruction, clock cycles per instruction or CPI. So this is actually an average uh, uh, average number. So you have a program, and your program has, I will show, we'll have, we'll have a presentation later. We have a program and uh, we run the programs. Of course, the program has uh, assembly instructions, and each of these instructions when they are executed, they consume certain certain number of clock cycles. And in a given program, when you average these uh, clock cycles consumed by each instruction, that becomes the CPI. Okay? And then, you just count the instruction and then you get the, no, you get the CPI. So for example, I have a program uh, that adds two numbers, say move, uh, RAX12 and then uh, add the uh, RBX, RAX. Right? So this is the program, right? And then these are instructions in the x86 instructions and architecture. Let's say this consumes uh, three cycles, and then the add consumes four cycles, right? If we add them, three plus four, seven. Divided by 2, 
Yan ako sa division. So, yan, yun yung CPI niya for this given program. Okay? And you can compute the clock cycle for this program. Uh, you can say that the instruction count, let's say, dalawa, 2 times 7 over 2. So, that will be the, the uh, clock cycle. So, the instruction for a program is determined by the program, the instructions of architecture, and the compiler. So, tatlo yung contributor sa instruction count ng program. Let's say, I will show you an example later. So, it's determined by uh, the program itself, the instruction architecture, and the compiler. So, average cycles per instruction is determined by the CPU hardware. So, there are some counters, uh, which are just later. And different, uh, if different instructions have different CPI, then basically you have the instruction mix, and then you try to get the average. So this, this are an example, okay. So you have computer A and you have a cycle time of 250 picoseconds and the CPI is two, okay. And then you have computer B, okay. Cycle time is 500 uh, picoseconds, uh, CPI is 1.2. So again, this is the average, okay, for a given program. So meron kang program dyan, meron kang program, niran mo siya sa dalawang computer. Well, itong program na to. Meron mo sa computer A and computer B. Okay? And it, these are the parameters for that particular uh, uh, for the particular run. Okay? Same instruction set architecture. Meaning, uh, for example, computer A is Intel and then computer B is uh, AMD. Okay? So they have different uh, properties here. So which is faster, Intel or AMD? Okay, so given that particular program. So to do to compute that, so you need to compute the CPU time for A, which is instruction count times the CPI of A times cycle time. So you get this, okay? And then for computer B, let's say for the AMD, so you have this instruction count. So you don't know actually the total instruction count. So you just simply represent it as I as a variable I, okay? And then uh, the same with computer B, and you get this final output, I times 500 picoseconds, I times 100 picoseconds. And then, you simply compute the relative performance. So the CPU time would be divided by the CPU time of A. So that will be I, then cancel yung term, and you get 1.2. So we should be had computer B is uh, uh, 1.2 uh, fast, uh, faster than uh, computer A and the Intel. Okay, so to illustrate this uh, further, Okay. Now, uh, uh, before we, uh, okay. after na lang itong slide na to, no? yung example natin. So, the CPI, uh, actually, uh, in different instruction classes, take different number of cycles. So, uh, sa pag-design ng processor, meron tayong iba't ibang instruction. Meron tayong data transfer instruction. Meron tayong arithmetic instruction meron tayong jump instruction. So, yung bawat class na yun, meron kanya-kanyang ano, meron kanya-kanyang CPI. Okay? So, they can take a different uh, uh, number of cycles. So, we usually have this uh, uh, formula to compensate for that. So, you have uh, I for a particular class of uh, instruction, CP, CPI for I. So, it depends on the class of instruction. And then the CPI okay, can thus be computed okay, like this. Okay, so you have the relative frequency. Okay, is this clear? So what we're doing now is trying to understand how to evaluate the performance. And our main variable is CPU time. Okay, how much time a user program is running in the CPU. And we're considering a lot of factors and what is CPI. So uh, this one illustrate the uh, the previous slide on how uh, uh, to use the different classes of the different CPIs for different classes of instructions. So let's say we have uh, alternative compiled code sequences using instruction in classes A, B, and C. So <clears throat> so we have three classes of instruction. So same program. Let's let's have a same. Uh, the, the, this example here is you have a same pro, uh, you have the same program, right? And basically you have a compiler. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at a compiler here, and I will show you later how this is done. So 
for there are two compilers used in this example, okay? And uh, there are three classes of uh, instructions with different CPIs. Let's say this is A is arithmetic, B is uh, uh, job instructions or branches, and then data movement instructions. They have different CPIs because they are different uh, instruction classes. Okay? And then we have the in IC is instruction count. Okay? For the first compiler, let's say compiler one, compiler one for the same program generated two instructions that belongs to this class. So, mer ano ba, meron siyang add saka sub, dalawa. Tapos, uh, for, for the branch condition, for the branch class, isang instruction yung na-generate niya. And then, for the data movement, sa dalawang instruction yung na-generate niya. Okay? Ito yung, ano, ito yung uh, compiler one. And the instruction count for compiler two, let's say this one, uh, para ma ano natin, GCC yung ginamit dito. So, ito yung output niya, number of assembly line. And then, this one is TCC. Okay, ito yung kanyang instruction. So, for, for, for computations, for add, sub, add, sub, alimbawa, for this one, class, and then, so you get the idea, right? Okay. So, for GCC or sequence one, the total number of instruction is, instruction count is five. For TCC, the number of instruction is six. So you might uh, you might think that ah, compiler one is faster because it only generated five instructions, right? Right. And compiler two is will take longer because it, it has more instructions, right? So however, that is not the case because you have to factor in the uh, CPI, right? So the average, right? Cy uh, clock cycles for instruction. So if you compute that, you will notice that uh, you can compute the clock cycle like this. Okay? So, weighted. So, 2 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3, that will be 10 clock cycles. So, despite having 5 uh, instructions only, the clock cycles uh, consumed by the, instruct by the code generated by the first compiler is 10. Whereas, the second compiler... Okay? So using the same formula, 4 times 1, 1 times 2, and 1 times 3, only 9 clock cycles. Okay? So you see that uh, even though uh, this one has more instructions, the number of clock cycles is lesser. So you can say it's probably uh, will, uh, take, uh, will be faster by the code. Which is this, okay? And you can have the average CPI, so 10 divided by 5 and then uh, 9 divided by 6. So that will be the average CPI for the program. And you see here that this is uh, smaller compared to this. Okay? So uh, this is the big picture about the uh, performance. So the CPU time will be basically, it, it has a lot of parameters. So when you think of performance, Programmer ka, gusto mo malaman yung performance ng program ko on this computer, on that computer, on our computer. Ano yung mga factors na mag-contribute doon? So these are the parameters. The, the number of instru instruction count per program, uh, the clock cycles for instruction, and uh, the number of seconds per clock cycle. Okay? So this, so in a way, uh, if you look, uh, traditionally, when we, we look at the performance of computer programs, one, two, three style, we focus on the algorithm. So, starting algorithm, n squared, n log n, uh, constant, or I don't know if there's a linear algorithm for sorting, but we focus on that. The algorithm will affect the instruction count, right? You know already in COMSI 1, 2, 3, uh, if you have an O of n squared algorithm, then you probably have uh, a nested for loop, right? So if you have a nested for loop, that will have more number of uh, instructions to be generated. Okay? It will also affect the uh, uh, cycles per instruction. Okay? The programming language also affects the uh, instruction count and the CPI. For example, if you're using C, okay, the generated, uh, if you take it, come say 131 uh, with me, the generated code for the C, uh, C code is very straightforward. Almost direct mapping from <coughs> the C code to assembly code. However, if you use C++, okay, uh, 
Okay? If you use C++, you will see that there are a lot of indirection. Okay? Because C++ is an object-oriented programming language. So the code that will be generated will not be as close as the assembly code. Okay? But rather, there will be a lot of indirection. You have class, you have member functions, you have virtual methods, or you have virtual members. Okay? So there will be a lot of instruction, and that will affect the instruction code. And especially if you use Java, for example. Okay? And then the compiler also affects the instruction count. As you will see later in the example that I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to try to compare two compilers. You have a given C program. Uh, we use GCC and another uh, small time compiler, TCC, to generate the code. So it affects the instruction count. Okay? And then the instruction count architecture also affects, of course, affects everything. The instruction count. Okay. Uh, a hello world program generated for x86 instruction architecture will have more instructions compared to a hello world program compiled to generate code for an ARM processor okay, or Raspberry Pi or cell phone. Okay. So because they are they have there are two different instruction set. We say that x86 is a uh, uh, CI a CIS, complex instruction set computer. Whereas the ARM is uh, a risk reduced instruction set computer, okay. the CPI is also affected, and uh, this one, the clock cycle time. Okay. So to give you an example of this, so uh, So we have here uh, already installed. Okay, so we also need. I also need to install some tools for per for performance uh, monitoring. Uh, install. Forget. So this one is top will install the uh, performance metric uh, tools okay, for this particular version of uh, the kernel. Okay. So. U name minus R will uh, display the version of the kernel. So remember that Linux is Ubuntu is a distribution. It's also uh, so Linux distribution, so unit name minus R will uh, tell you the version of the kernel being used, the Linux kernel being used in this. Okay. So let's have an example. Okay. Uh, let's say we have a program inc.c, which basically an, which increments just a number, in uh, main, let's say we have uh, And this is a variable a, 30, uh, and just increment that, uh, a plus plus, okay? and then return, success. Okay? It's a very simple uh, program. Okay? Let's see uh, how performance will be affected by this. So first, let's compile this using GCC. Get the uh, okay. So we have this uh, output, the source code, and we have the machine code, the executable, okay, that's supposedly to run on an x86 architecture. Then we use TCC. Ah, I forgot. Uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. So I have to change the name. So let's con uh, let's, let's TCC. And then, okay. 
So from the same source code, from the same source code, uh, you will notice that GCC generated a much larger executable compared to the smaller one. So how do we test this thing? So of course we, we can check if they are executing correctly. So we can type uh, hello uh, ink gcc.exe probably worked. Okay. So this is the elapsed time when we dash last, and that will be the elapsed time. Everything happened. Okay. And then if we run uh, tcc, almost nothing happened. Okay. So as mentioned in the lecture. Uh, the algorithm basically increments just a, num a number, a, var a variable, okay? So that's the algorithm. The programming language affects the uh, uh, instruction. So we use the same language C. If we use C++, we'll have a different result, okay? But we use C here. And then we use different compilers. So how do we uh, test if that is correct, okay? So we can use the object dump command okay. let's try the object dump command obj dmp and let's us disassemble the uh, incre the increment executable generated by gcc okay. so this is so again the compiler will convert the C code into assembly code. So let's look at the main function here. So you have a lot of other functions. So this is the code generated for the main. So how many instructions are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, for this particular uh, for this particular executable generated. Now let's look at uh, the code generated for main by TCC. So, uh, object dump minus D uh, ink dot TCC uh, dash TCC. Okay. And let's look for the main. Okay. So, this is the main code generated. So, we use two compilers. Okay. GCC and TCC, and uh, what do you observe? Which one generated uh, more instructions for that increment? So it's TCC, right? So you will notice that, again, uh, when we test this uh, code, you will see that uh, this one, GCC, generated few instructions only, and well, this one for the increment generated. Right? So that's what we mean by that. Okay? So now let's look about let's look at the CPU time, the actual CPU time of the execution of these programs. Okay? So uh, I installed a while ago yung Linux tools. Basically, those are used for uh, performance counters, meaning uh, hardware counters. Para malaman mo talaga, they hook to the kernel para malaman mo habang nag execute yung process is ilang bang CPU cycles talaga yung ginagamit niya. So, uh, it's called the perf tools. Okay? So, pag niran natin yung ano, pag niran na perf uh, start uh, G, uh, ink dot dash gcc okay? we're going to uh, you need uh, sudo access because you need some access to kernel data structures and variables. Okay. So, this is what you'll get. Okay. For the case of uh, running that program. Okay. And then, uh, let's run the one for uh, TCC. So, uh, sudo perf uh, Ink TCC. Pula okay. on start. So you see here. 
So performance counters. Okay. So you see there the uh, CPUs utilized. So if you compare the the two, okay, uh, 0 0.54 details are uh, about ECC. 0 0.58 okay. uh, Cycles. Okay. So this is the cycle count. You can see that. So container yung cycle dito. Dito, madami cycles. And then you have this one is inscribed instructions per cycle. In the lecture, I was discussing about cycles per instruction. So, you know, reverse naman yun. So, sabihin, uh, reverse naman yun. So, uh, per cycle, 540,000. And this one here is uh, 509 instruction per cycle. Okay. And branches, okay. mga jobs, okay. and branch pieces, etc. And then, you have this uh, total right. So notice that this is the second uh, use, second time lapse right, for the entire program. Right. Which one is faster? Always remember that the ultimate measure basically is time, right, as pursued by the user. Right. So you see CPU time. Which one is smaller? This one or this one? So this one, right? So you will notice that despite despite uh, GCC generating a small number of uh, instructions, right, when it comes to the time elapsed, still TCC which has the smaller number of uh, smaller amount of time. You get the idea, right? So now our example code is purely uh, let's say. Wala masyadong system calls to eh. Diba? Wala tayong printf dito. Okay? Now, what if we add printf? What will happen? Okay? So, let's say printf percent %d uh, a equals percent %d backslash n uh, let's say a. Tama ba? Okay. And then, we compile that gcc minus o uh, ink gcc gcc.exe ink.c Anong error? Patay STDIO okay. Pero warning lang naman yun Ma, Pero sige, kung OC kayo <laughs> Ilagay nyo na rin yan Okay So tapos sa TCC naman Okay, okay. So now let's try running that. Use uh, let's try first uh, looking at the code generated, the main main function. So you can see here that there is a call instruction. Okay. Uh, let's look at the TCC generated code for main. Asan ba yung ito? Okay. So, mahaba din siya. And, of course, you, you can see the call queue instruction, right? So, and then, we run the perf tool. For this, you see? Okay. And then, we run the one for this, you see? So, uh, okay. So, which one has the shorter elapsed time. Ano na yun? Ito na. Diba? So, you see the difference when you introduce uh, a combination. So, maraming factors. Hindi lang isa yun ang contribute sa performance na isang program. Okay? Is that clear? So, uh, yeah. That's basically it. Okay. Okay? So, next is power trends. Okay? Uh, why is power important? Uh, Power is important because the computer will not run if you don't put in power. And of course, you have transistors. Transistors are switches. It moves from on off state, off state to on state, okay, something like that. So uh, this graph here, uh, uh, most uh, computers use the CMOS technology, okay, complementary. Uh, metal oxide semiconductor integrated circuit technology and they are used to build the chip as you've seen last time. 
So the clock right here, on the y axis, and you have the, uh, this one is for x86 based Intel processors. Right? So 1982, when I was two years old. So 3.3 yung ano, megahertz for the 286. Uh, 1985 to 386. Uh, ay, ito yung, 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 ito hit the power wall. Okay. And they realize that because one way to improve the performance is to increase the clock rate, right? But the problem is, oops, you can no longer increase the clock rate because it will uh, overheat. It will burn the CPU. I think there were a lot of uh, AMD pro processors then that were uh, burned. Suno, habang ginagamit. Kasi pag inactivate nila yung overclocking, so they realized that we can no longer uh, do that okay, because of this equation. So the power, okay, uh, this value here is generated by the capacitance, capacitive load multiplied by the voltage and uh, the frequency. Okay? So in a way, if you increase the clock rate, okay, this will have uh, higher frequency and the power will basically uh, Okay. So, <clears throat> over time, uh, what they did eventually is they introduced to be able to circumvent this power wall. Kumaga, we can using existing technology, technology, we can no longer increase the clock rate because this is what's going to happen. Right. So, what they did now is to simply uh, introduce multiple. Uh, course at a lower clock rate okay? and eventually lower uh, power requirement. Okay? So that's so what's happening now. Okay? So, I, I okay? so you see here the power. It's very important in data centers, yung uh, warehouse scale computing. Kasi mga kusin mo, kahit dyan sa ICS data center, Maraming mga servers dyan, rack mountable servers, 1U, 2U. And then, pag walang air conditioning dyan, makakita mo yung, ano, yung init na, ramdam mo yung init na ano. Kaya pag nag, minsan pag nalimutan yung aircon, yung heat nag-dissipate doon sa kabilang room, sa room namin. Right? Because of that. And actually, fire hazard. Okay? So, this is what happened. Okay? Uh, so these are just some formulas on how to uh, uh, compute the power uh, consumption. Okay. So you have here uh, the reduction, some reduction. Okay. So the power wall, we can reduce the voltage further, okay, and uh, we can uh, remove more heat. Okay. So that's basically the idea. So maybe. I mean, kahit yung mga gaming uh, review, meron kayong mga advanced cooling system to be able to, ano, to uh, uh, compensate for the excessive heat generated by the GPU or the processor itself, right? So, may mga color-color ba yan, di ba? Meron ba kayong ganong build? <laughs> okay. May mga pro gamers, they have those kind of build. And uh, so, what they did is, if you have, if they've hit the power wall, why not? Just make multiple processors and make uh, instructions execute at uh, different uh, processors and at a lower uh, clock frequency, okay. or yeah, clock, clock rate. Okay. So this is the progression, and uh, this is for uni processor. Okay. And you see here the. Xeon, ser Xeon processors usually are used in server, so yung mga server, pag, pag nag-LSP yung kayo dun sa ano, Xeon, yung mga sa mga server. Okay, so those are Intel processors. And you see here the performance relative to a old computer. Okay, relative to uh, an old computer. And you see the increase in performance. Okay, so, uh, dinivide niyang graph na to sa tatlong parts. So, yung growth dito, 
okay? Yung performance is uh, 25% per year. Tapos dito, umarangkada in this uh, 1996, uh, 1986 to 2002, okay? Nandyan yung pag-arangkada ng uh, performance, okay? And then, pagdating dito, yan, nating na yung mga atlon, okay? Then, yung per year, ito na lang yung kanyang improvement per, ano, per, uh, per year, 22%. So, it is constrained by uh, power, okay? okay? Yung power wall, instruction level parallelism, which we're going to talk about later, okay? Uh, doing fetch decode execute the different pipe, uh, different time sequence, pipelining, and of course, memory latency. So memory is also a, bot a bottleneck, okay? So that. And uh, they introduced now multiprocessors, okay? So multi-core microprocessors, okay? More than one processor per chip. However, the problem is the burden now is transferred to the programmers okay? and system developers because Normally, a programmer would think sequentially, I have this problem, I'm going to solve this problem, I have an algorithm, and my algorithm is sequential. Now, if you, and if you write a program that only works on one processor, and if you buy a, 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 a machine with multiple cores, then the other core will not be utilized effectively. Okay? So, the burden now goes to the programmer, the developer, specifically the system developer. So nowadays there are tools actually that automates that process. Pero parang holy grail pa rin yun eh. I mean, kahit ngayon ma may mga issues na mag, uh, mag uh, may meron kayo makikita mga issues in terms of concurrency, shared memory, input cache coherence, etc. that are difficult to do in uh, parallel programming. So I don't know, in, in Comsai 180 you're going to uh, take parallel programming. So that's the idea. How do you program for multiple cores? Okay. You can just let the compiler do the, that, that for you or you explicitly tell, uh, this one will run on this core, this, uh, this piece of code will run on this core. Okay. So yeah, we'll discuss that. And parallel programming actually is done by the programmer. Now, although underneath the machine, there is also some concept of parallelism like uh, instruction level parallelism, meaning yeah, yung pipelining, for example, okay? And this is hidden from the programmer, okay? So essentially, uh, it's hard to do. Uh, MPI, for example, uh, MPI, message passing interface, is one, one, uh, one method uh, to perform parallel processing via message passing, okay? So yung data mo, ipapasa mo sa isang computer, sa ibang computer over the network, kung compute niya, gabalik sa iyo yung result. So there's a library. So it's actually hard to do because you have to familiarize yourself with the API, with the library, and some common idioms on how parallel processing is done. Okay? So it's not actually new, yung parallel processing. Uh, dati kami, isang single processor lang siya, pero maraming physical computer. Ngayon kasi, isang unit lang, nandun yung apat na core. Dati, apat na computer, tigi isang core yon pinag-uusap-usap namin sila via message passing. Pero ngayon, hindi. Isang physical chip, nandun yung four cores. Yan. Yung idea. Okay? So, you also need to consider load balancing. Okay? Okay, na-divide mo nga yung work. Pero baka naman yung, yung core zero, nandun lahat ng bulk ng work. Okay? Baka naman yung core one, nandun yung bulk ng work. So, uh, example, you have a four, four core here and ito yung mga loads niya. Diba sabi ko kanina, meron tayong user tapos meron tayong system part. Okay? Uh, diba sa elapsed time, meron tayong user CPU time, meron tayong system CPU time. So, this basically the loading average per unit time. So, notice na, makakita nyo, the operating system or some programs itself will have to balance the load among the CPU cores. Okay? So, uh, as much as possible, equal sila. Kung baga, lahat sila ginagamit, walang idle. Okay? Although, in the operating system, you can actually uh, force a process, a program, 
to run on a specific core. Para yun na yung gagamit. Hindi siya lalabas doon. Okay? You can do that. Okay? So, and of course, optimizing communication and synchronization. Kung nandun lang sa isang chip, yung apat na cores, yung communication ng bawat core, mabilis lang. Kasi they can have a shared memory. Okay? But pero yung instance na sinasabi ko kanina, na apat na computer magkakahiwalay, tapos tigi isa-isang core sila, tapos pinag-uusap namin sila, that is an uh, medyo problematic yun in terms of communication kasi lalabas pa sa computer network yung data mo. Unlike pag nasa isang chip ka na lang, pwede sila mag-usap via shared memory. Okay? Meron silang direct line. Okay? So, we'll stop here. Basically, the rest is just uh, benchmarking. And we'll just breeze through this uh, next meeting. Okay? So please pass your paper.